Hey guys, I'm Pedram, surgical resident from Melbourne, and in this video we're going to be discussing the resources you guys can use to help you pass the GSSE. Now it's a big exam with a fail rate that's as high as 40 to 50 percent, so we really need to help dial in these resources to pass this exam on our first shot. This video will be split into two parts, and across the two parts we'll be discussing a variety of resources such as textbooks, summary notes, courses, anatomy atlases, question banks, YouTube channels, and as well as other things that I think you'll find useful. Now I'm going to preface the textbook section by uh, saying that I personally don't really like using textbooks. I have a very short attention span, which means reading long paragraphs of text just doesn't really sit well with me and I don't really get much out of it. Having said that, the uh, GSSC is said to be based off a couple of textbooks and you can see what textbooks those are in the prescribed reading list uh, from the Rex website. You do need to get your head around these textbooks. I personally prefer to use the PDF versions of the text because I can use the search function to search keywords and just read pertinent paragraphs rather than going through entire um, entire chapters. However, if you're the type of person who gets a lot more out of reading entire chapters, then by all means go for it. The anatomy textbook that is most talked about would be Last's Anatomy, and I would consider this the bible for anatomy textbooks when it comes to GSSC study. Uh, you'll find that a lot of the bank questions that you end up doing are actually pulled directly from LAST. I don't think this happens as frequently anymore in the current set of exam questions, but it does show you that a lot of their concepts come from LAST. LAST is fan as a fantastic textbook because it talks in great depth about the relations between different structures, which is what the GSSE loves to ask you about. So definitely make, you make sure you've got yourself a copy. Unfortunately, LAST doesn't have a lot of pictures, so someone, for someone like myself who is a visual learner, it makes it a little bit difficult uh, to just use LAST as your anatomy um, text, which is why I prefer to supplement it with something else, something a little bit more visual, such as a, a 3D anatomy atlas, like Complete Anatomy, and I'll talk a little bit more about that uh, within this video, or alternatively, another textbook like Instant Anatomy. Instant Anatomy is a more visual version of a, summa a visual summarized anatomy textbook which goes through key anatomical concepts and structures and um, ideas and represents them graphically. So it's a perf perfect accompaniment to the last textbook. Next up, we've got pathology textbooks. So the two pathology textbooks that I would recommend would be Ganong's textbook and also West's respiratory. Again, I myself don't like textbooks that much so I would only really uh, turn to these textbooks if the summary notes that I had didn't do a fantastic job in explaining a concept or just for generally difficult concepts to begin with. Uh, you'll find that they are very descriptive uh, and have more pictures than something like last would have. So they are good textbooks to use. However, I myself didn't end up using them too much. Finally, for pathology, the recommended text is Robin's Pathologic Basis of Disease. Pathology is my weak point, so I did end up using this textbook a little bit more, although in general, I still ended up using YouTube a lot more for understanding pathology concepts. I don't think you need to get too hung up on whether you have the latest version of all the textbooks, uh, because the GSSC doesn't necessarily ask you the most up-to-date version of what's going on. Uh, as long as the textbook that you have uh, satisfies the criteria of explaining something adequately, explaining a concept adequately, and has enough pictures for you, I think that's perfectly fine. And the recommended texts are just that, they are recommended. You can supplement the, your knowledge with whatever other resource that you want to use, which is the whole point of this video. All right, summary notes. Summary notes are what took me across the line, 100%. These were the most useful part of my GSSE study. Uh, and it, everything else is a mile behind, effectively. So the three summary notes that I've seen, uh, there is a worked answers uh, PDF that's floating around and basically has all of the bank questions and someone has taken the time to go through each one and provide you with worked answers with complete with pictures and references to different textbooks and this is primarily the reason why I didn't feel the need to go to too many textbooks to read um, or to delve into them because all of the answers were already worked out with a reference in this particular PDF. Uh, I, don't, I have no idea who's made this PDF in the past, so if you do know, please tell me uh, because they deserve a lot of credit. 
So the summary notes that I had were broken down into anatomy, physiology, pathology, and I've gone down a little bit further and broken it down into each individual topic so that I have a single PDF file for, for example, respiratory physiology, and I can just go through that if I just want to do respiratory physiology, and I found that really, really helpful. Everyone has probably already seen Leon Lai's notes. Uh, Leon Lai made these notes, I think, in 2006. He's a neurosurgeon now. Uh, and it's basically a really good summary of pathology and physiology. He doesn't do so much of the anatomy, although there is an anatomy PDF out there, out there as well. Um, but the pathology and the physiology Leon Lai uh, notes are very, very helpful in, again, providing you with a summary of what you need to know. And they can be used in conjunction with both your other summary notes that you have or the textbooks as well to make sure that you've got a really good understanding towards the end of my study that's pretty much all i'd really be reading because i wasn't really keen on reading texts and texts and paragraphs to try and understand the concept i would try and make sure that i'm at the level where i can just go back to leon lies notes and read a quick excerpt of what i need to know and that would be enough hopefully uh, there is also a set of summary notes called Winters. Uh, so they're Winters Anatomy Notes, and they are quite in-depth. I almost wouldn't really call them summary notes, but they are quite in-depth explanations of all the different uh, anatomical structures, relations, etc., uh, such as those uh, taken from last, but it's they've just added a lot more pictures into it. So that's really another really good resource that you can use if you're finding last lacking with regards to pictures, which most people probably would. Um, but... They are quite long, uh, so you need to be able to have the time to put into reading them as well. Moving on to anatomy atlases, these are going to become your best friend for studying uh, the anatomy portion of the GSSE, and they're going to complement everything else or every other resource that you use for your anatomy. The two I'll be talking about is Ackland's Anatomy and also Complete Anatomy. Ackland's Anatomy is the OG of your anatomy atlases. I'm sure you guys would have seen it through medical school. You would have had access to it at that point in time. Uh, and you pro you've probably already gone through it once. I probably ended up going through Ackland's Anatomy another couple of times during my GSC study. Now, the thing to note about Ackland's Anatomy is that it's quite basic in its explanations and in its relations between different structures, its insertions, atta or its attachments rather, uh, and functions of muscles and things. So you, it's really good for foundational base knowledge with regards to your anatomy and you really do need to build on top of that knowledge if you are going to uh, have the level and depth of knowledge required to pass the GSSC. But again, it is fantastic for starting off. So if there's a particular area that you're not too sure about, you're not quite confident enough, then definitely start with Ackland's Anatomy and see how you go. Uh, it's also really good for just reiterating things like for example, the different foramina of the uh, cranium really good they've got a great video on that in Ackland's anatomy and you can just go through and just get familiar with looking at the different foramina so you're able to spot them if they do come up in exams or or in real life uh, and you can also have a look at the various layers so Ackland's is really good at showing you the different layers of the body so for example the different layers of the muscles in the forearm they kind of peel them back one by one and so that becomes really useful for visualizing where uh, muscles or structures sit and it's, effect, uh, it's going to be very useful if you aren't doing a Diploma of Anatomy course where you would otherwise get that somewhere else in real life. If you don't have that, then having something like Ackland's is going to be quite helpful for you. Just bear in mind that you probably do need to supplement Ackland's with something else in order to get that level of knowledge that you require. Next, we've got Complete Anatomy. I loved Complete Anatomy. I was introduced to this by one of my uh, orthopedic consultants and he actually uses it for his patients as well in, in terms of explaining what's going wrong, what's gone wrong, what muscles or what bones are involved, etc. Uh, but for me, it was just fantastic because I'm such a visual learner. It was great to visualize in 3D the structures that I'm learning about and their relations and how they twist and turn around other structures and how they course through the body. Uh, it can be a little bit fiddly to use, so the one of the benefits of uh, Complete anatomy, anatomy is it allows you to create screens, which uh, effectively you add and remove different anatomical structures until you've got something that you really like, and then you can save that screen. Uh, so for example, I might create a carpal tunnel screen where I've got all the structures that run through the carpal tunnel. Save that so that the next time I come back, I don't have to spend half an hour trying to recreate that screen. The, uh, the downside is that it does sometimes take you know half an hour to create a screen because all the 
uh, structures are so intricately named in terms of they're kind of cut off at different levels uh, and you need to be able to name all the different levels and click on them in order for them to either appear or disappear depending on what you're trying to show. Uh, so creating a, you know, <clears throat> a quadrangular space um, screen might take you 15 minutes. Uh, but the good thing is you can save it so that you can come back to it and have a look at it. You can also, there's lots of other features like you can label things, you can see how muscles move so the motion uh, is really helpful so for example if you've got uh, uh, shoulder flexion you can see all of the muscles that are involved in shoulder flexion and you can click on the different ones to try and figure out which one is active at what point throughout the movement cycle so that's really helpful uh, the course function for neurovascular structures is also really helpful so you click on for example the radial nerve or you know the facial nerve and you click on its course and you can see exactly from start to finish where it goes, what foramen it goes through, and what other structures it's related to. So that's also very, very helpful. They have a radiology tab, which attempts to um, correlate CT scans and radiographs with anatomical structures. So you're kind of like floating, uh, going through the CT scan and also seeing, clicking and fi figuring out where that particular point in that scan correlates to the body. So that's really good, especially for people who are into radiology. Uh, definitely going to be very very helpful for you one thing I would note is that there are some discrepancies uh, especially when you compare what is shown in complete anatomy compared to last anatomy and when you do find those discrepancies you should always trust trust lasts because last is what the exam will be based on so don't be disheartened when you find something that that doesn't make quite a lot of sense in complete anatomy always make sure you go back and you supplement that um, that knowledge or that piece of information with other sources such as YouTube or LASTS to try and figure out uh, what the correct answer is and also just to help your learning and understanding. If you guys would like either videos or explanations on how to uh, use complete anatomy or how to make the most out of it, please let me know and I can definitely make some of those as well. Next up, we've got YouTube channels. Now, YouTube was so so unbelievably helpful in studying for the GSSC. Uh, you'll find so many great videos out there that will help to supplement your learning, uh, especially when it comes to you've read some you've read something that doesn't really make a lot of sense to you. You go and watch a YouTube channel uh, or a YouTube video on it, and it just makes so much more sense. What I would recommend is watching multiple videos on the same topic because each person will explain a particular concept a little bit differently, and you'll find that. Once you've heard something in three or four different ways, it makes a lot more sense rather than just reading it once or watching one video on it and trying to, uh, I guess, apply the knowledge that you've learned in that one video or that one text to GSSE style questions. The YouTube channels that I found most helpful were Ninja Nerd, who has fantastic videos on especially uh, pathology and physiology, but uh, extremely long videos, so you need to have a bit of time to watch them. The Noted Anatomist was one of my favorite finds throughout my GSSC journey, a, an, an anatomist from the USA who provides really helpful and easy to understand videos. Uh, there's About Medicine, who is, I believe, an Australian gentleman who uh, does 3D visualization of different anatomical structures, which is also really helpful. Uh, anatomy Knowledge, Anatomy Zone, Human and Anatomy Lessons, Armando uh, Hasud. Hasudungan, I'm not sure if I'm saying his name right. I believe he's also another Australian uh, medical student slash doctor who uh, does a lot of drawing style, vi uh, drawing style videos and also Wests for respiratory physiology. His videos are also up on YouTube. So check those out. If you find any others that you think I should include in the video, please let me know and I can pop them in as well. All right, I think this is long enough uh, for the first part, so we'll split it into two. Uh, I'll put the link to the second one somewhere, maybe here. I don't really know how to use YouTube yet. Uh, we'll figure it out. Uh, thanks for listening. See you next time.